What's up, everyone? Welcome back to what I hope is the finale for Silent Hill. I think I've said that a couple times already. What we have determined is that the door does, in fact, lead back out onto the first floor from the second. Which, it's kind of confusing. It's something I'm going to have to learn to deal with spatially, lest I get even more lost than I've already been. Speaking of lost, I may have to cut ahead in a moment because I'm kind of going in circles right now. Okay, so now that I have that sorted out in my head, and I have a better mental picture for what the layout of this area is like, what with the confusing first, second floor shenanigans, let's go back to trying to solve this puzzle. I've been thinking about the inscriptions, and I, now that my head's a little bit clear, I think I know the idea behind this, the light to the future, and then the other one is the light illuminating the darkness. And I thought it was odd that, there it is, the camera mentioned that it had a flash. So, yes! My idea is right again. The light illuminating the darkness. I don't know why my camera doesn't, or I mean my, um, my little breast pocket flashlight doesn't serve that same function, but... Hey, contrived puzzles! Okay. Now that I know that... What, where do I go from here? Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so... Triangle... Corner... Arrow. Oh, shit. Um... Let's get another good look at that. Oh, I see. So am I removing things to make the object? Am I removing things? That's one thing I'm not sure of. Oh wait, that reset it. Oh, do I have to do it all at once? This could go wrong in many ways. And then... Oh, what was... What was the bottom right corner? It was the arrow, but which way was the arrow pointing? I'm gonna say it was pointing towards top left, and hope. Hold on. Oh, it was pointing towards bottom left. I'm gonna write these down real quick so I have a reference to go by. We will be back with a completed puzzle in about 20 seconds, hopefully. Oh, I was missing the the two on the ends for the arrow. That's a little annoying. Now we go over to this one. And I am removing them. I... Not sure what I was missing. I think I was doing... Yeah, I was doing the wrong direction again. I've solved some pretty tough puzzles in like, in under five minutes throughout this playthrough. I don't know why that was such a roadblock, Jesus. There's a place mark in the book. Oh, I didn't even mean to go to that. I meant to pick the health drink up. White Claudia, perennial herb, found near water, reaches height of 10 to 15 inches, oblong leaves, white blossoms, seeds contain hallucinogen. Ancient records show it was used for religious ceremonies. Religious ceremonies, huh? The hallucinogen effect was key. Oh, no, that'll just pick the book up again. Want the health drink. So this white Claudia, I think I kind of spoiled it. It's really a minor spoiler. That drug, PTV, that was mentioned by name, I believe is a derivative of white Claudia, or it might be the other way around. It's that, that's the birdcage key. Keys to unlock keys in this game. I thought that was actually going to turn the electricity off, but I guess this makes more sense. Is there anything left to do here? I'm surprised I can't do anything with the altar, do I? Hmm. Nah, I don't have anything for the altar. Okay, back down to the first floor to get the bird cage, And then 
That'll probably give me the Feleg key. And then we can go from there. So let's see. In the right spot for the time being. Good to be on track right out of the elevator. Ugh, oh, so pissed off that I was going in circles for such a long time. Okay, so it's this door. Birdcage. With fluttering wings, but nothing inside. I don't know why you hear wings fluttering when the birdcage is clearly empty. Anyway, though, we will head back out here. I guess it's just a spooky effect. This door. Yeah. Almost ran right past it. Would have had a shit fit if I went completely in another circle. This doesn't look good. Can't see what's coming at me. Oh, shit! Oh, God! These things! That's not good. So, they... lull you into a false sense of security... with those things... with the larval stalkers... in Midwich Elementary... only to confront you with those... later on. There's something behind me, but there's also this door? Where does this door lead? Uh, out into a big hallway. I don't want to traverse that hall until I'm done with this one. Can I pull the dagger out? The chain is missing a link. Oh. What about... this? Cool. of contract. What did they actually do? Wait, the chain is fixed with the ring. I'm not sure what that did. I maybe I will find out later? I don't know. Huh? Whoa! Is there something inside? That's what that did. So I'm guessing I would have had to fight something if I didn't chain link the, uh, the door shut. I wonder... I wonder if it's one of those tentacle monsters from the hospital that I had to distract with a blood pack before. It would have to be something that I haven't just fought tons of already, right? Oh, no. Okay. I was getting a little bit worried that I was getting spit out in random directions again. No. That's fine. I know where all that is. That is the kitchen. So then across from me is a door that I do not have a key for yet. So while I'm going through here... What three games come to mind when you think of Konami. For me, their holy trinity is pretty much Castlevania, Metal Gear, and Silent Hill. Even though I'm not that big of a fan of Metal Gear, it's clearly Konami's big cash cow franchise. Like, they're probably the most identifiable Konami series. Also, this was the storage room where Harry went, DRUGS! Oh, wait, no. It was a different message. Anyway, yeah, those are the three. Silent Hill being the most recent addition to that that trinity. If you've played the Silent Hill HD collection... Wait, I might have to hold that thought off. Yeah, I can use the tape here. Am I gonna get something new? Yes! Still has an unusually high fever. Eyes don't open. Getting a pulse, but just barely breathing. Her skin is all charred. Even when I change the bandages, the blood and pus just start oozing through. Why? What is keeping that child alive? I can't stand it any longer. I won't tell a soul. I promise. So please. Uh, 
I have basically been stumbling across important side stuff that flushes out the world by accident throughout the whole playthrough. Like the thing about Officer Gucci back in the police station. And now we get a clear picture of Lisa talking about how she can't stand taking care of Alessa because of everything that's happening in the basement of Alcamilla Hospital. All the this weird supernatural stuff, the pus spewing out of faucets, this unnatural magnetism that Alessa seems to have for insects. And she's describing Alessa's condition. She describes her skin, which is very, very important. And I think I just spun myself around. Oh, shit. This is Alessa's room. I think... Are these... Ah, uh, they're just playing cards. I thought they were tarot cards, because there are a lot of references to tarot cards in the game. The deal with all of the moths that she has framed on her room. You know how there are a lot of insect enemies? Well, they appear to be due to how Alessa's... Alessa is, is fascinated with insects. In fact, one of the bosses, remember, uh, the Float Stinger was a gigantic moth. So she seems to have some kind of fascination with uh, with insects. Is there anything, any of this I can actually read? Thou possess them to guard thy spirit, evoke five rites, unveiled thy fate. Hmm. Five rites. wonder if it is... Ah... Uh. So, I'm inserting all of these objects that I keep finding. The dagger. So, there's two more, assuming the Amulet of Solomon also fits in there. Right, so I need to find two more objects. And there was another named door back there. Actually, I wonder if there are going to be seven doors after the seven Olympian spirits. Aratron. I can't go in there yet. So now, where do I go? This leads back out here, so that's not the way. So the hallway then that I wanted to go, this was the kitchen? Oh, right, I do want to go back in the kitchen. Because there was also the other doorway. Oh, it's behind the fr fridge. No, that was not another doorway. Hmm. Actually, we have two more named doors. We have Bethor and Aratron. Okay, next, what I have to figure out how to do is the second floor plate room. I have to figure out how to shut the electricity off. Unless I got an item for that. Did I? I did not. I still have the camera, which is odd. It indicates I might need to use that again. Okay, I got a little bit sidetracked with two different thoughts. Uh, I'll take the most recent first, since I was talking about some of the symbolism behind the monsters anyway, and how they're connected to Alessa. Uh, a couple others, the Air Screamers, the giant pterodactyl-like enemies, the demon pterodactyls, are inspired by The Lost World by Arthur Conan Doyle, which is supposed to be one of Alessa's favorite books. The Rompers are... A, they represent Alessa's fear of adults, and they probably pin you down just like the people at the hospital. The nurses and the officials at the hospital had to pin her down. This, this is an incredibly creepy room. The floors and walls are covered with graffiti. Well, no shit. The eyes. Yikes. Actually, kind of reminds me of, um, of 
Osiris Wrath in Osiris Wrath, damn it. Osiris Room in Soul Eater. Still have to find the time to get around to recording that. Osiris Rat, that is. Jesus. This episode has been all sorts of disorienting so far. Okay. So, we have an Ankh, which is another item I'm assuming I'm going to need to place in Alessa's room in the door. Back in here yet again. I have so little of an idea of what I'm supposed to be looking for. I have walked hell in creation to find... Please don't tell me this is what I'm missing. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch! It's a packet of gel... Do you want to open it? Yeah, there's probably a key in here. It's probably... Uh, God damn it. I've been in the storm like four times. There's gonna be a lot of stuff cut out in the past, I don't know, ten minutes. Shit. That's exhausting and irritating. Exasperating is what I'm going for. Okay, we're back on track. This is not the right door, that's Eritron. The right door is right here. Okay. Finally, back to making sweet, sweet progress. Oh, this looks like the generator room. So that will let us get to the key on the second floor, which by now I've kind of forgotten. Wait. I wanted to shut it down. I don't think that did what I wanted it to do. Oh, no, that was just a prompt to press the switch. So that did do what I wanted it to do. Okay. Now, I have a pretty good idea about where to go. Except once I get to the second floor. Then it falls apart a little bit again. I know it's one of the rooms up there. It's just which... Whoops. Wrong. Hold on. Oh, this... That's why this door works that way, because obviously when you shut the generator off, the elevators stop working. That's why this dumps you out into the second floor. So there's actually kind of a logical, or at least not a logical reason for it. But from a design perspective, maybe it was this one where the grating changes shades to red, to rust colored. Nope, it's none of those. Is there a door on the left? No, so it was probably this door. It looks like... No! This was the Zodiac room. Uh-oh. Which door? This dumps me back out. Which door had the plate? Shit. So close. I can feel it. Oh, there's new enemies, so that probably means this is... I'm on the right track. Oh, God! These things! How much damage did that do? A lot? Enough. Enough to worry me. That's jammed. I believe it, the door is in this hallway. We will find it eventually. Oh, yes, mi yes, 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 yes! I'm so relieved to find you, Key. Okay, I'm making one more trip back out. Into the hellish recesses of this difficult-to-navigate place. Nope, not that way. Off to a bad start. At the beginning of the end. And I believe that was the last door. I only need one more object to put in the door in Alessa's room. We're getting there, guys. We are certainly doing it. Elevator's not working, so I have to find the one that dumps me back out. What did that door look like? It's this door. That's jammed. It's not that door. My... My mind is... Slowly but surely starting to fail me. 
So now, as we wind down, I'm going into brute force mode, where I'm just gonna try everything. My mind just feels burnt out right now on dealing with this level. So shit, please lead me back to a place that I want to be. I believe that's the right... Oh, hell. Gotta keep a watchful eye out for these shadowy bastards. Ah, the bastards. Okay. I'm going places where I want to be. This will lead me... This was the... Then leads back to the elevator, so... I want to go through Phaleg. And use my final key. I hope it's my final key. There are seven Olympian spirits. There are seven Olympian spirits. You know what? Let me turn the generator back on. Because it seems like the elevator is probably a useful utility. There are seven Olympian spirits. I've only gone through five doors, collected five keys, but there's only one uh, object left that I need, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's only five doors, hopefully. This level has taken a toll on me, as you can see. Everything is going according to plan, sheltered in the womb. But it's not done yet. Half the soul is lost. That is why the seed lies dormant. And what soul remains captured in that husk? Is buried deep down in the subconscious. Are you trying to say it won't work? That wasn't our agreement. No, no, these are just stalling tactics. If we lend a hand, we will be able to get power. Never fear, the promise shall not be broken. But the power we could draw now will be very weak. Almost nothing. Unless we get the other half of the soul. We'll use a magical spell. Feeling this child's pain, it's sure to come. But that will take time. Pretty big deal that cutscene was. It's demonstrating what the cult was trying to do and what Alessa's significance it was. They were trying to use Alessa as a vessel to birth their god. And in the process, Alessa split her soul in two to avoid birthing the god of this crazy ass cult into this wor uh, into this world. Okay, now I can start making my way back. I think this is one of the last things, if not the last thing I have to do. Let's see. Daggers in place. Yeah, I have everything now. Disc of Ouroboros, and the last thing is the Ankh. Alright, let's see what lies beyond the threshold. Come, come along. No! No! I don't want to! Do what Mommy tells you now. I just want you to lend me a teeny bit of your power. That's all. No! I don't want to do it! It will make everyone happy, and it's for your own good, too. Oh, but Mommy, I just want to be with you. Just two of us. Please understand. Oh, yes, I see. Maybe Mommy has been wrong. Mommy! Why didn't I see this before? There's no reason to wait. Herein lies the mother's womb, containing the power to create life. I could have done it all myself. Mommy?
And one of our final revelations, if it wasn't already pretty obvious, Alessa is the daughter of Dahlia Gillespie. And of course, as we just established in the cutscene prior to that, Dahlia was attempting to use Alessa to birth the cult's god into the world. I was shocked to realize the talisman of Metrotron was being used. In spite of the lost soul returning at last. Just a little longer and all would have been for naught. It's all because of that man. We must be thankful to him. Even though Alessa has been stopped, his little girl has to go. What a pity. <laughs> Freeze! What in the devil's name? Dahlia. Well, well, well. To think you'd make it this far. Where's Cheryl? What have you done to her? What are you talking about? You've seen her many times, restored to her former self. I'm in no mood for jokes. Don't you see? She's right there. That's absurd. You are the only one who thinks so. Why? Why are you doing this? It's been a long seven years. For the seven years since that terrible day, Alessa has been kept alive, suffering a fate worse than death. Alessa has been trapped in an endless nightmare from which she never awakens. He has been nurtured by that nightmare, waiting for the day to be born. That day has finally come. The time is nigh. Everyone will be released from pain and suffering. Our salvation is at hand. This is the day of reckoning. When all our sorrows will be washed away. When we return to the true paradise. My daughter will be the mother of God! Nobody uses me. You won't get away with this. Your role is over. We don't need you anymore. What do you think you could accomplish by coming here? My, aren't we getting cocky? Bet you can't see this. A glove with this! I thought I got rid of that! All I had to do was plant it somewhere to be fine. You all put on kept you busy. Ah, you're easy. And there's more where this came from. Stop it!
Huh? What the? First things first, go immediately to, I'm going to say the hunting rifle, reload it first, and then equip it. So, part of my reason for wanting the good and good plus ending is because you get a much cooler version of the final boss, which is this satanic looking thing. Jeez, that one hit me. That is my favorite first death of the entire game and it was a one shot that I could <laughs> I don't know how I would have seen that coming I couldn't move once it, the animation started we use a, a weapon that you swing the motion will change okay okay while we fight this boss and he shoots lightning at me and I try to run away this time where do we even start with everything that just happened we got the biggest info dump of the whole game one of the only big ones of the whole game Oh, I'm not sitting through this cutscene again. So let's try to go over this as well as possible. Okay, let's start with something that was not super well defined. So the Mark of Samael and the Seal of Metatron were brought up throughout the game, and then Dahlia makes this passing remark that she didn't know the Seal of Metatron was being used right there in that ending cutscene, or that, that pre-final boss cutscene. What I'm going to try to do, by the way, is I'm going to try to just run in circles whenever I hear getting ready to start casting the lightning that's that's looking really hard to avoid though but I'm just gonna take pot shots and listen for the sound effect and run in circles uh, anyway Alessa was placing seals of Metatron around the town to try to control the the cults influence and the the evil god and all this supernatural stuff that's been going on and Dahlia tells you it's the mark of Samael because well, pretty much just because it sounds ominous and she wants to manipulate Harry into joining her and using the flower I was on Alessa, so Dahlia will once again have control of her. It's not really a well-fleshed-out thing as of the first Silent Hill, but it gets fleshed out more in later games. Alessa's latent power and some inherent supernatural power of the town is what's allowing Alessa to manifest her torment in the form of what we see in the nightmare world and the monsters of the town. Okay, so now on to the juicy stuff. I can't- I also can't tell if I'm doing much to him. This is not the prettiest final boss fight. But I'm gonna attribute part of that of trying to wrap my head around and explain all the shit that just happened. Okay, so good stuff here. Dahlia in a ritual to expedite the process of bringing their god into the world, this guy, the Incubus, the Incubus, caused a huge fire which burned Alessa horribly, which Lisa alluded to in the VHS tape. Alessa then splits her soul in half during the ritual to stop the god from being born. We pretty much know all of that already. The other half of Alessa's soul is Cheryl. Who you, and you probably figured that out by now. Harry mentions he just found Cheryl somewhere and adopted her. Oh, that's it. Hold on. We'll get through the rest of this in a bit.
Okay, to keep that recap going, Dahlia tortured Alessa so Alessa would call out to Cheryl and reunite with her. Alessa herself wanted to reunite so that she could kill herself and end the suffering. And Dahlia just wanted her for the ritual. And that radiant goddess figure is the merged soul of Alessa and Cheryl, the incubator. Since we bottled the Aglophidus from the hospital and used it to save Sybil and we did the Kaufman side quest, Sybil was still alive in our ending and Kaufman intervened to douse the incubator in a Galophidus, which caused her to abort the god. Yeah, so uh, as far as the other endings, so to get the, the good plus ending, which is the one we got, you have to save Sybil and do Kaufman's quest, and that results in you fighting the incubator, or I mean, I'm sorry, the incubus, not the incubator. And the other good ending also results in you fighting him instead of the incubator. In the two bad endings, you fight the, the incubator which is the merged soul of Cheryl and Alessa. So the way you get the other ending and what happens, if you don't save either of them, Sybil or Kaufman, you get the bad ending and Harry loses Cheryl. If you don't save Sybil, but you do Kaufman's quest, you get the regular good ending, which really doesn't make much difference, except the stuff with Sybil doesn't happen, obviously. Uh, if you have, if you save Sybil but don't do Kaufman's quest, you get the bad plus ending and Sybil is just kind of there to comfort you. And in the end, this part is a little bit confusing. The Incubator, the merged soul of Cheryl and Alessa, dies and reincarnates in an entirely new entity, that baby. Oh, also, fun fact about that final boss, if you go into the final boss fight with no ammo, it just dies eventually, it just keels over dead. We are just about out of time, so I'm going to start wrapping this up with my final thoughts of the game. A game that I have rediscovered my love for. It's not as scary as when it was all new and strange to me and, and unnerving. Plus, I'm, I'm much, much older now than the last time I played this. It still has a powerful effect on me, though, and it still holds up pretty well. Two and three... Overall, though, far superior. Silent Hill 1 is is still very rough. It holds up, but it's rough. And just uh, one more quick thing before I close this out. Sorry that this has been, like, such a mess of a finale. It's kind of been all over the place, jumping around. Mentally, this has just been an exhausting episode. But that's the end of a game. Sooner or later, I might get around to playing Silent Hill 3, which is by far my favorite entry in the Silent Hill franchise, but that might be something for 2014. Probably. Probably something for 2014. And you know, there is a there were stories left unfinished, but come to think of it, the story that I was gonna tell is better left for Silent Hill 3 anyway. You know what? There's really no getting around it. I don't know why I wouldn't play Silent Hill 3. Yeah, expect that sometime early next year. Silent Hill 3 is going to happen. Anyway, that's the end of Silent Hill 1. Knock Knock should be ending pretty soon as well. The next full Let's Play that I'm doing solo. Of course, there's Brutal Legend going on right now with Mike, and then after that, Mike's going to be playing Rise of Nightmares. The next solo LP, though, there are going to be a couple short ones. Gonna be Maniac Mansion, followed by Super Earth Defense Force, followed by Mega Man X4. I don't know what the next long one is gonna be though, but the three of those together, they'll be about the length of one long LP. Anyway, if you like the video, in spite of this one being kind of all over the place, be sure to hit the like button, click my name right below the video if you want to go to my channel and see more videos, mostly more focused than this one. And be sure to comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.